Theresa May uh, recently had been called Theresa May Bead because she seemed to be going left and right on Brexit. And then after the presentation yesterday, it's back to Theresa May. <laughs> um, but um, what is your thoughts on, you know, how do you make uh, decisions? Because we are, at the end of the day, here because of the decisions we've made to date, so they are important. What's one minute advice on decision making? Again, it, it's the same piece of advice I mentioned earlier. It's listen more, talk less, find out, gather your trusted advisors, speak to people, get their opinions, get their views, then trust your own gut. But make sure you crowdsource to get the right insight. So I do think that's something that Theresa May has done is she has gone out and spoken to different business leaders, different opinion formers, and then she's come up with her strategy for Brexit, whether you agree with it or not. She's listened, she's heard, and then she's delivered. I do think she's a bit damned if you do and damned if you don't. If she didn't mm. come out front foot with a warning to part of the European Union, people would have said, well, she hasn't made it clear, we're going to be, be walked over in the negotiations. She has done it and now it's, well, actually, she shouldn't have put in a threat before we've even started negotiating. So right. I do think she's in a very difficult position. We've not been in this position before as a country. No. Uh, there is no legacy in place for mm -hmm. us to be able to refer back to. So we are in uncharted territories, but that's what the UK population voted for. We've got to find a clear path to do it. Yeah. And I think she's doing a great job and it's a difficult job that she's doing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the reason why, again, people get paid the big bucks, isn't it? Yeah. But let's, well, I was going to talk about Brexit later, but as you mentioned it, um, let's just talk about this for a second. Christine Lagarde today told the BBC uh, over at Davos, she said, um, when you belong to a club, whatever that is, the members of the club have a degree of affinity and particular terms of under which they operate. Any deal with the EU will not be as good as membership, she warned. And then obviously we've heard over the last few days UBS moving a thousand jobs to here and then HSBC doing the same. And those are high paid jobs, right? So whether people like bankers or hate bankers, they earn a lot of money and the Exchequer needs their cash. So oh. what, you know, what do you think is going to be the future of this little misty small island? Are we in, are we in trouble? So I can talk about this from a communications point of view and from a creative industries point of view. Um, so I am actually one of my other roles is as a business ambassador for the Department of International Trade. So I represent the creative industries. So part of that role is to encourage foreign direct investment into the UK and also to encourage export of our industries from the UK. Um, if I think about where the next billion middle class consumers were going to come from, they weren't going to come from Western Europe. We have fantastic relationships currently with Western Europe. If you think about the creative industries, about 42% of our export is to the European Union, about 56% to Europe. So we have great trading relationships with the EU. But if I think about where the growth is going to come from, the next wave of growth from an advertising and creative industries point of view, where we can identify those middle class consumers for brands and products to appeal to, it's going to come from the emerging markets. So it was going to come from Central Eastern Europe, it was going to come from the Middle East, and it was going to come from some of the African nations. So I believe if we have made a decision to leave the European Union, it wasn't a decision I agreed with, I did vote Remain, mm -hmm. um, but the British public has voted, it's voted based on what they are feeling in the UK. Um, and a lot of that is to do with migrancy. Mm -hmm. But from a business perspective, we need to start forging relationships with some of those emerging markets quickly um, for us to survive, to make sure that we secure growth. So where you have the HSBCs of the world retracting employment from the UK, where can we then attract foreign direct, direct investment from other markets? Mm -hmm. We need to do that quickly. But we also need to think about the consumer and what the consumer feels. So advertising has historically been a bellwether for the economy. And um, up until the end of last year, the predictions for 2017 in terms of advertising revenue showed the eighth consecutive year of growth. Mm. So it was looking at 7.2% growth year on year, which you'd think, well, how can that be possible with Brexit? we haven't left yet. Right. Um, so at the moment, that's the predictions that we're going to see the eighth consecutive year of growth. But at the same time, um, Group M, 
um, who is the trading body that looks at all the media investment for all of the WPP media agencies. They have been conducting a Group M um, EU referendum tracker to look at consumer confidence and to look at what consumers are going to be doing and the impact of Brexit. And in the last wave, so the eighth wave from the EU tracker, it actually showed consumers saying that they're actually going to budget more because of Brexit. And I think that figure had increased to something like 62% of consumers now saying they're going to budget more. So from a advertising perspective, that means that consumers are going to start prioritising more. They're going to be spending less on brands mm. that aren't as important so that they can prioritise and spend more on brands that they do believe are important. Right. That has implications for my industry in terms of marketeers and clients cutting spend, focusing on the bottom part of the consumer funnel, which is that people who are already in the market and trying to actually really focus on the bottom of the funnel rather than looking at branding and looking at trying to pull more people into the marketplace. Mm. So that, that, that has an effect. So as soon as we start seeing that consumer confidence start to wane, it will affect our industry. Mm. Um, and so I need to try and work with clients to make them realise that marketing is an investment and not a cost. Yeah. So short term, it sounds like we've we're we are like the Titanic. We just hit the iceberg. We're floating for now. It seems okay. Eighth consecutive year of okayness, and then we're going to go down. We haven't left yet. So exactly, everything yeah. looks great at the moment. We have not. Article mm. fifty has not been triggered. Absolutely. We yeah. are seeing client spend. The, the pattern of spend is changing. Yeah. It's more short termism, but yeah. they are spending. It's um, what happens when we start those negotiations, That's what right. happens after March. Yeah, well, everyone over at Davos is saying we're in for a very, very tough journey between now and... Uh, I, I, I think, you know, clients are going to need to start looking at where, looking at their costs. Um, mm. If you think about it, we've already had Marmite Gate, we had uh, Walkers and we had Bird's Eye looking at increasing their costs by 12%. And this is on the back of consumers having experienced for the last few, few years food deflation. So suddenly yeah. food inflation is going to be a bit of a surprise. And yeah. we're going to see that really hit this year, I feel. That's right. That's right. Do you think some of the people that voted f to, to leave don't get... A lot, a lot of people sort of beat up the bankers the whole time and they sort of you know, say, we've got to leave because... I was on the train actually coming down from Nottingham one day and I heard some two, uh, two British lads talking about why they don't like immigrants. They don't like immigrants because they work hard and they don't ask for that much money. And I was thinking, well, we're going to be left with you. We're going to be in real trouble, right? So, <laughs> um, but <laughs> but um, do you think they, didn't un they don't understand the fact that if we just beat up the bankers and they all move, that we just, the Exchequer won't have money to spend? I mean, I, we need know, I think we have to respect the British public because they voted to leave. Yeah. And I think uh, there were lots of emotional triggers why people voted sure. to leave. So people voted to leave because they were experiencing um, not being able to get their kids into their local schools sure. or not being able to get an appointment at their local GPs. Right. Somehow that was connected with the EU referendum and that's what people seem to associate with if we leave. Uh, I remember the Leave campaign having that bus saying 350 million being diverted back into the NHS, which then everybody denied having anything to do with. But that, you know, that, that it was emotional. There was an emotional decision about what real people were feeling. Um, and in my view, um, the, the whole referendum became clouded in migrancy. So the fact that we may have underinvested in the NHS for the last five years wasn't mentioned or invested in our education system could be the reason why people can't get themselves and their kids into schools yeah. or public services but it is what it is so we need to make sure that there's the best possible path for the UK and that the UK is absolutely seen as global Britain I do think that's great um, I, I think it's what we sh you know where we had we have the Britain is great campaign it always has been it will continue to be and it needs all businesses to make sure that it does happen yeah.